Apollo 11 was the American spaceflight that first landed humans on the moon. Commander Neil Armstrong and Lunar Module pilot Buzz Aldrin landed the Apollo Lunar Module Eagle on July 20, 1969, at 2017 Coordinated Universal Time, and Armstrong became the first person to step onto the moon's surface 6 hours and 39 minutes later, on July 21 at 2.56 Coordinated Universal Time. Aldrin joined him 19 minutes later, and they spent about two and a quarter hours together exploring the site they had named Tranquility Base upon landing. Armstrong and Aldrin collected 47.5 pounds of lunar material to bring back to Earth as pilot Michael Collins flew the command module Columbia in lunar orbit, and were on the moon's surface for 21 hours, 36 minutes before lifting off to rejoin Columbia. Apollo 11 was launched by a Saturn V rocket from Kennedy Space Center on Merritt Island, Florida, on July 16 at 13.32 Coordinated Universal Time, and it was the fifth crewed mission of NASA's Apollo program. The Apollo spacecraft had three parts, a command module with a cabin for the three astronauts, the only part that returned to Earth, a service module, which supported the command module with propulsion, electrical power, oxygen, and water, and a lunar module that had two stages a descent stage for landing on the moon and an ascent stage to place the astronauts back into lunar orbit. After being sent to the moon by the Saturn V's third stage, the astronauts separated the spacecraft from it and traveled for three days until they entered lunar orbit. Armstrong and Aldrin then moved into Eagle and landed in the Sea of Tranquility on July 20. The astronauts used Eagle's ascent stage to lift off from the lunar surface and rejoin Collins in the command module. They jettisoned Eagle before they performed the maneuvers that propelled Columbia out of the last of its 30 lunar orbits onto a trajectory back to Earth. They returned to Earth and splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on July 24 after more than eight days in space. Armstrong's first step onto the lunar surface was broadcast on live TV to a worldwide audience. He described the event as, one small step for, a, man, one giant leap for mankind. A, Apollo 11 effectively proved U.S. victory in the space race to demonstrate spaceflight superiority, by fulfilling a national goal proposed in 1961 by President John F. Kennedy, before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, the United States was engaged in the Cold War, a geopolitical rivalry with the Soviet Union. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite. This surprise success fired fears and imaginations around the world. It demonstrated that the Soviet Union had the capability to deliver nuclear weapons over intercontinental distances, and challenged American claims of military, economic and technological superiority. This precipitated the Sputnik crisis, and triggered the space race to prove which superpower would achieve superior spaceflight capability. President Dwight D. Eisenhower responded to the Sputnik challenge by creating the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and initiating Project Mercury, which aimed to launch a man into Earth orbit. On April 12, 1961, Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first person in space, and the first to orbit the Earth. Nearly a month later, on May 5, 1961, Alan Shepard became the first American in space, completing a 15-minute suborbital journey. After being recovered from the Atlantic Ocean, he received a congratulatory telephone call from Eisenhower's successor, John F. Kennedy. Since the Soviet Union had higher lift capacity launch vehicles, Kennedy chose, from among options presented by NASA, a challenge beyond the capacity of the existing generation of rocketry, so that the US and Soviet Union would be starting from a position of equality. A crewed mission to the moon would serve this purpose. On May 25, 1961, Kennedy addressed the United States Congress on urgent national needs, and declared, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal, before this decade, 1960s, is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind, or more important for the long-range exploration of space, and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. We propose to accelerate the development of the appropriate lunar spacecraft, we propose to develop alternate liquid and solid fuel boosters, much larger than any now being developed, until certain which is superior. In July 1962 NASA head James Webb announced that Lunar Orbit Rendezvous would be used and that the Apollo spacecraft would have three major parts, a command module with a cabin for the three astronauts, and the only part that returned to Earth, a service module, which supported the command module with propulsion, electrical power, oxygen, and water, 
and a lunar module that had two stages a descent stage for landing on the moon, and an ascent stage to place the astronauts back into lunar orbit. This design meant the spacecraft could be launched by a single Saturn V rocket that was then under development. Technologies and techniques required for Apollo were developed by Project Gemini. The Apollo project was enabled by NASA's adoption of new advances in semiconductor electronic technology, including metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors in the interplanetary monitoring platform and silicon integrated circuit chips in the Apollo guidance computer. Project Apollo was abruptly halted by the Apollo 1 fire on January 27, 1967, in which astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger B. Chaffee died, and the subsequent investigation. In October 1968, Apollo 7 evaluated the command module in Earth orbit, and in December Apollo 8 tested it in lunar orbit. In March 1969, Apollo 9 put the lunar module through its paces in Earth orbit, and in May Apollo 10 conducted a dress rehearsal in lunar orbit. By July 1969, all was in readiness for Apollo 11 to take the final step onto the moon. The Soviet Union appeared to be winning the space race by beating the US to firsts, but its early lead was overtaken by the US Gemini program and Soviet failure to develop the N-1 launcher, which would have been comparable to the Saturn V. The Soviets tried to beat the US to return lunar material to the Earth by means of uncrewed probes. On July 13, three days before Apollo 11's launch, the Soviet Union launched Luna 15, which reached lunar orbit before Apollo 11. During descent, a malfunction caused Luna 15 to crash in Mare Crisium about two hours before Armstrong and Aldrin took off from the moon's surface to begin their voyage home. The Nuffield Radio Astronomy Laboratory's radio telescope in England recorded transmissions from Luna 15 during its descent, and these were released in July 2009 for the 40th anniversary of Apollo 11. The initial crew assignment of Commander Neil Armstrong, Command Module Pilot Jim Lovell, and Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin on the backup crew for Apollo 9 was officially announced on November 20, 1967. Lovell and Aldrin had previously flown together as the crew of Gemini 12. Due to design and manufacturing delays in the LM, Apollo 8 and Apollo 9 swapped prime and backup crews, and Armstrong's crew became the backup for Apollo 8. Based on the normal crew rotation scheme, Armstrong was then expected to command Apollo 11. Michael Collins, the CMP on the Apollo 8 crew, began experiencing trouble with his legs. Lovell took his place on the Apollo 8 crew, and when Collins recovered he joined Armstrong's crew as CMP. In the meantime, Fred Hayes filled in as backup LMP, and Aldrin as backup CMP for Apollo 8. Apollo 11 was the second American mission where all the crew members had prior spaceflight experience, the first being Apollo 10. Dickie Slayton gave Armstrong the option to replace Aldrin with Lovell, since some thought Aldrin was difficult to work with. Armstrong had no issues working with Aldrin but thought it over for a day before declining. He thought Lovell deserved to command his own mission. The Apollo 11 Prime crew had none of the close cheerful camaraderie characterized by that of Apollo 12. Armstrong in particular was notoriously aloof, but Collins, who considered himself a loner, confessed to rebuffing Aldrin's attempts to create a more personal relationship. Aldrin and Collins described the crew as amiable strangers. Armstrong did not agree with the assessment, and said, all the crews I was on worked very well together. The backup crew consisted of Lovell as commander, William Anders as CMP, and Hayes as LMP. Anders had flown with Lovell on Apollo 8. Ken Mattingly was moved from the support crew into parallel training with Anders as backup CMP in case Apollo 11 was delayed past its intended July launch date, at which point Anders would be unavailable. By the normal crew rotation in place during Apollo, Lovell, Mattingly, and Hayes were scheduled to fly on Apollo 14 after backing up for Apollo 11. Later, Lovell's crew was forced to switch places with Alan Shepard's tentative Apollo 13 crew to give Shepard more training time. During projects Mercury and Gemini, each mission had a prime and a backup crew. For Apollo, a third crew of astronauts was added, known as the support crew. The support crew maintained the flight plan, checklists and mission ground rules, and ensured the prime and backup crews were apprised of changes. They developed procedures, especially those for emergency situations, so these were ready for when the prime and backup crews came to train in the simulators, allowing them to concentrate on practicing and mastering them. For Apollo 11, the support crew consisted of Ken Mattingly, Ronald Evans and Bill Pogue. The capsule communicator was an astronaut at the Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas, who was the only person who communicated directly with the flight crew.
The Apollo 11 mission emblem was designed by Collins, who wanted a symbol for peaceful lunar landing by the United States. At Lovell's suggestion, he chose the bald eagle, the national bird of the United States, as the symbol. Tom Wilson, a simulator instructor, suggested an olive branch in its beak to represent their peaceful mission. Armstrong was concerned that 11 would not be understood by non-English speakers, so they went with Apollo 11, and they decided not to put their names on the patch, so it would be representative of everyone who had worked toward a lunar landing. After the crew of Apollo 10 named their spacecraft Charlie Brown and Snoopy, assistant manager for public affairs Julian Shear wrote to George Lowe, the manager of the Apollo spacecraft program office at the MSC, to suggest the Apollo 11 crew be less flippant in naming their craft. The name Snowcone was used for the CM and Haystack was used for the LM in both internal and external communications during early mission planning. The astronauts had personal preference kits, small bags containing personal items of significance they wanted to take with them on the mission. Five 0.5-pound PPKs were carried on Apollo 11, three were stowed on Columbia before launch, and two on Eagle. Neil Armstrong's LMPPK contained a piece of wood from the Wright Brothers' 1903 Wright Flyer's left propeller and a piece of fabric from its wing, along with a diamond-studded astronaut pin originally given to Slayton by the widows of the Apollo 1 crew. NASA's Apollo Site Selection Board announced five potential landing sites on February 8, 1968. The best Earth-bound telescopes could not resolve features with the resolution project Apollo required. The landing site had to be close to the lunar equator to minimize the amount of propellant required, clear of obstacles to minimize maneuvering, and flat to simplify the task of the landing radar. The original requirement that the site be free of craters had to be relaxed, as no such site was found. Five sites were considered, sites 1 and 2 were in the Sea of Tranquility, site 3 was in the Central Bay, and sites 4 and 5 were in the Ocean of Storms. The final site selection was based on seven criteria, the site needed to be smooth, with relatively few craters, with approach paths free of large hills, tall cliffs or deep craters that might confuse the landing radar and cause it to issue incorrect readings, reachable with a minimum amount of propellant, allowing for delays in the launch countdown, providing the Apollo spacecraft with a free return trajectory, one that would allow it to coast around the moon and safely return to Earth without requiring any engine firings should a problem arise on the way to the moon with good visibility during the landing approach, meaning the sun would be between 7 and 20 degrees behind the LM, and a general slope of less than 2 degrees in the landing area. The Apollo Site Selection Board selected Site 2, with Sites 3 and 5 as backups in the event of the launch being delayed. In May 1969, Apollo 10's lunar module flew to within 15 kilometers of Site 2, and reported it was acceptable. During the first press conference after the Apollo 11 crew was announced, the first question was, which one of you gentlemen will be the first man to step onto the lunar surface? Slayton told the reporter it had not been decided, and Armstrong added that it was not based on individual desire.